Hey guys, so aviation has come a long way since the Wright Brothers Flyer 1 took off for the first time in 1903. Aircraft are setting unbelievable records one after another. The Flyer 1 was only in the air for 12 seconds, where it covered about 120 feet. However, it was revolutionary. Modern planes can fly distances of 8,860 miles, like the Bombardier Global 7500, or at speeds of 2,200 miles per hour, like the Lockheed SR-71A. But the record holder for number of records has almost 500 aviation records, and 240 of them are world records. This Titan doesn't take off. It pushes itself off the ground. It's not an airplane. It's... A marvel. Every airport where the flying giant AN-225 takes off or lands gathers a huge crowd of onlookers to witness this amazing sight. Witnesses delightfully share their emotions after meeting this monster. So this bird's wingspan is 290 feet. It is 276 feet long and 60 feet tall. For comparison, a FIFA soccer field is 328 to 360 feet by 210 by 246 feet. And the famous flower carpet in Grand Palace in Brussels is 79 by 253 feet. It weighs 250 tons and up to 640 when fully loaded. Its max speed is 528 miles per hour. Its max altitude is seven and a half miles. Its cruising altitude is 5.6 miles. Its max flight range is 9,570 miles. Its practical range with 200 tons of cargo is 2,500 miles. It needs a runway of 7,900 feet to take off without cargo and a runway of 11,500 feet with cargo. This Titan takes off at 350 miles per hour and lands at 183 miles per hour. The plane's 141-foot long cabin is large enough to easily fit another plane or train inside. The D-18T jet engines on the AN-225 are also large. Their diameter is over seven feet and they weigh 9,000 pounds. There are six of them. Each generates over 23 tons of thrust during takeoff. Now, it's true that the size of the AN-225 and that the chassis of the plane leaves marks on the runways means that uh, not many airports allow them to land. By the way, the Maria has a unique seven-row main chassis with two struts and two wheels for each row. So the cost of each per top is about $1,000, and there are 32 of them. four on two front supports and 28 on the main ones. They need to be replaced every 90 landings. Now the four rear struts and wheels can rotate to turn the giant 180 degrees in an area just 184 feet wide. By the way, uh, the nose cargo ramp takes seven minutes to open and the process has been nicknamed the elephant's bow. The elephant eats a lot, too. 16 tons of fuel per hour while in cruising mode. It can take up to 36 hours to refuel it as well. Additionally, the Goliath doesn't just take off. It fairly quickly dives into the sky, swings its wings, and heads off. So, why was this mammoth made in the first place? Well, Soviet developers once worked on creating a spiral system. The idea was that a powerful plane could reach speeds of Mach 6 with a piloted orbital ship on the back. The rider would start with a boost and at altitudes of 17 to 18 miles. The project stopped before flight testing, but the spiral project became the Buran project. But the Buran was to be carried into space by a rocket carrier with unrivaled energy. 
So the multi-use space and air energy Buren system was the USSR's answer to the American space shuttle. Everything went smoothly, including the pilot-free landing, the lack of toxic fuel, and the horizontal flight testing. But how could they transport the various rocket carrier components and the spacecraft from the production and assembly site to the launch site? The fuel tanks themselves were 26 feet across. Various projects were considered. Adventurous specialists suggested looking at the Spiral project again. So the idea to create a jet transport plane with a super high cargo capacity was born. The heavy plane should have been able to lift at least 250 tons. They used the AN-124 as a base. The main designer from Molnia Gleb, Lozinsko Lozinski, considered the orbital ship with the Maria right from the start. But that system remained only in the drawing stage. There's an interesting story with the name too, by the way. The Antonov babies don't just carry the names of legendary heroes. The AN letters are the brand for all planes from this experimental design bureau. But the successor to Antonov, Pyotr Balabuev, surprised everyone and told his team to give the AN-225 an unusual name, Maria. At night, before the memorial date, just a few hours before the ceremonial unveiling, the NATO code for the super transport is Kazakh. The AN-225 has 14 flights with the Buran that lasted 28 hours, 27 minutes in total. The first flight was on May 3rd, 1989. Now, never before had a space equipment test been shown to such a wide audience, especially live. The famous Le Bourget Expo was in Paris that year, and everyone was astounded by the giant AN-225 with a spaceship on its back. Practical and fairly exotic suggestions started popping up at the Aviation Scientific Technological Antonov Complex. For example, Mr. Samarkand from Great Britain suggested making a three-deck passenger liner based on the Maria. Two decks would go in the cargo hold, and the third would replace the passenger section. Now, creating huge ships for businessmen or for newlyweds with showers and other amenities were suggested. There were also various shops and casinos proposed. There was a suggested route from Sydney to London to Tokyo to Sydney. Now, oil workers planned on using the AN-225 to transport a fractionating column weighing 190 tons on an exterior hook from Kubyshev to the north. Normally, transporting such a column takes two years. The Maria could do it in 15 days. Now, work began on reinforcing the column by the developers and manufacturers to attach it to the plane. But after a few months of intense work, the client canceled the order without explanation. Now, about at this time, the Energy Buran project started winding down due to high expenses and the lack of need. Of course, working on the AN-225 has also slowed down. The Giant was sent on a vacation of an undetermined length. It was taken apart and its engines were put on the ceremonial Ruslug. But the Maria was lucky once again. After being grounded for a long time, a modernized and certified plane for commercial use took off on May 7, 2001. In 2009, the AN-225 went through another modernization and increased its lifespan until 2033. In 2001, the Titan carried a record 253.82 tons into the air and set another record commercial load in 2004 of 247 tons of construction equipment from Prague to Tashkent. In 2009, the Maria delivered the heaviest cargo load in history from Frankfurt to Yerevan. It was a generator with special dimensions weighing 187.6 tons. The AN-225 is also called, often, an ambulance, since many of its flights carry humanitarian aid cargo all over the world. And the AN-225's takeoffs and landings are real shows. 
Crowds of people gather to watch it. For example, huge traffic jams formed on the roads leading towards the Perth airport in the land down under. People even slept in their cars to get a better spot to watch. So have you ever seen this beast take off or land? Uh, maybe you were next to it or lucky even inside. Be sure to let me know in the comments. So that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time.